These are United States Marines. They're professional fighting men, dedicated to the defense of their country and fiercely proud of their corps and its traditions. The Marine holds a unique position and reputation in the profession of arms. One of their own, Colonel John W. Thomason, Jr. wrote of them, you could find every sort of man from every sort of calling. There were large bone fellows from Pacific Coast lumber camps and tall, lean Southerners who swore amazingly in gentle, drawling voices. Husky farmers from the Corn Belt and youngsters who had sprung to arms from the necktie counter. Diverse people who ran curiously to type with drilled shoulders and a bone-deep sunburn and a tolerant scorn of nearly everything on earth. The old breed of American regular regarding the service as home and war as an occupation. Today, this old breed of American regular has to function in terms of a great many new techniques. In addition to his skill at amphibious assault, he is now mastering the method of attack known as vertical envelopment. The helicopter gives him the ability to move swiftly ashore, regardless of beach conditions, and to come in where his enemy is not, to open the attack on terms and at the place of his own choosing. The Marine of today must be ready for any kind of fight, from a brush fire war to full-scale nuclear combat. How a Marine Corps enlistee comes to be one of these professionals, ready and able to take his place in America's defensive armory. How he comes to be a Marine. This is the story we want to tell today. There are two Marine Corps recruit depots. One at San Diego in California and a larger one at Paris Island, South Carolina. Training at both installations is the same, and the objective the same, the making of Marines. The setting for our story is Paris Island. A busload of new recruits is arriving for training. Your first look at Paris Island is a quick one. You move directly from the bus into the reception building. It's like the corporal said, from now on, there's no such thing as wasting time. Processing starts right off with another batch of questionnaires to fill out. But the paperwork is just about over. This is a campaign hat. It is the badge of the drill instructor. Are right, you people? Look up here. Feast your eyeballs on me. I'm your drill instructor, so take a good look at me. For the next 12 weeks, you're going to see me morning, noon, and night. I'm going to be your mother, father, sister, and brother. I'm going to spend every minute making you into Marine. You make any mistakes, and I'll be right on your back. Make too many, and you won't be around this platoon very long. When I tell you to move, you'd better jump. You're going to learn courtesy and discipline as well as you know your own name. Whenever you speak to me, the first word out of your mouth, I'd better be sir. I get those eyeballs straight to the front. You there, boy, I said straight to the front. I don't want to see one eyeball quiver. You learn right here and now to keep your eyes and ears open and your mouth shut. All right, face to the right. Follow me. So far, all you've been given is the towel around your neck. Now you move off in formation, if you can call it a formation. Passing by the Iwo Jima statue, you can't help wondering if those guys were as full of butterflies when they started training as you are. The next thing is to shed your civilian clothes. This is where you kiss them goodbye. You can send them home or give them to the Salvation Army or burn them, but you can't keep them. That's where the towel comes in. Marine recruits will be uniform in appearance, trim and clean. The recruit haircut does make for cleanliness and uniformity, no doubt about that. Every recruit will take a thorough shower following the haircut session. Now you're ready for a uniform. When you get that first issue of clothing, you begin to really believe you're in the Marine Corps. And you are. But you're not a Marine, not yet. They take a lot of time and care to make sure that every man's shoes fit his feet exactly. And for a good reason. 
A lame Marine's no good to anybody. Your gear is issued by the numbers. The sergeant explains it this way. Don't move till I say move, and when I say move, move. That's the way it's done, by the numbers. By the time you get settled down, get your barracks cleaned up two or three times, it's time for lights out. When a DI comes into the room, you will be on your feet. You can take your time stowing your gear, as long as it's not over five seconds. In the morning, training will start in earnest. But right now, you learn another Marine Corps tradition. Evening prayer. It's silent, each man to his own. Once again, and from now on in everything, as you find out, a recruit does things by the numbers. Stand by to hit your racks. Out of your shoes. On your racks. Move. Move! All right, get inside them. You people will be quiet. You people will go to sleep. For 12 weeks, you'll eat, sleep, and dream Marine Corps. You'll attain a physical fitness you've probably never known. And you'll make friendships that will last as long as you live. You'll gain the same pride, self-respect, and love of the Corps that marks your DI as you earn your place in the company of an elite body of men. Right now, however, all that's ahead of you, and today you begin in earnest. The core takes first things first. As you've been told once or twice, you're all fat, sloppy civilians. The physical training sessions are calculated to correct that situation and to teach you to work together. Your best seasoning and teamwork comes with close order drill. from scratch and there's a lot to remember. If you don't remember, your DI will take time to remind you. Boy, you are outstanding. You know that? Yes, sir. I can't hear you. Yes, sir. The confidence course is rightly named. As with the rest of the recruit training, it starts with easier obstacles and works gradually up through the tougher ones. Some of the final ones you don't get to until late in the training cycle, which is all right by the recruit. There's plenty to do in any one day without trying to do everything at once. Calisthenics under arms is part of the training, which brings you to feel that your rifle is as much a part of you as your hands and your feet. The relationship between a Marine and his rifle is a special thing, and the recruit finds it out early. Now, as time passes and the D.I.s stay on your back, something begins to happen. One day, you can feel that you and the others are working together smoothly, knowing what to do, doing it with precision. This is the moment, or at least one of the moments, when pride takes root and starts to grow. It's simple enough, really. There's a basic satisfaction in doing a thing well. Don't get the idea a recruit ever gets a chance to start feeling smug, though. If there's any way to satisfy a drill instructor short of absolute perfection, nobody's found it yet. 
Every recruit learns the rifle creed. It starts like this. This is my rifle. There are many like it, but this one is mine. My rifle is my best friend. It is my life. I must master it as I must master my life. My rifle without me is useless. Without my rifle, I am useless. The Marine Corps as a whole has to be ready for amphibious operations. That goes for recruits, too. You'd be surprised how many guys don't know how to swim when they start training. But they learn before they're through. By the numbers. On Sunday, a recruit can go to the church of his choice, and he's encouraged to do it. It's a simple fact that a basic part of America's strength lies in its faith in God. And who's got so much strength he couldn't use a little more? There comes a time, finally, when you start learning to fire the weapon you've been taking such tender care of all this time. As with everything in recruit training, this goes step by step. Initial firing with the M1 is done at close range, one round at a time. This is serious business, and every man has in mind to become an expert. There's another part of the rifle creed which says, my rifle and myself know that what counts in war is not the rounds we fire, the noise of our burst, nor the smoke that we make. We know that it is the hits that count. We will hit. Meantime and always, the physical conditioning goes on. The fat comes off and working muscle takes its place. The instructors do what you do, and a lot more, since they do it with several groups a day. Recruit training isn't easy, but along the way you learn something very important. You learn that you can go until you can't go anymore, and then go some more. Don't get the idea recruit training is all muscle work, though. You spend plenty of time in the classroom, too. Busting your skull over subjects like Marine Corps history, map reading, nuclear, biological, chemical warfare, personal hygiene, American democracy, the mechanics of weapons. One high point in the training comes when the recruits take part in a field meet. The various events are familiar, some of them. Others have a more uniquely military flavor, as you'll see. All of them are gone into with plenty of yelling and laughing and enthusiasm. Something new in the training program is bucket drill. Remember how you used to play with sand in a bucket when you were little? Forget it. Here you start off with a little sand and it feels like a ton. But before long, you can handle it okay. Whenever this happens, they add more sand. Bucket drill has all the advantages of working out with weights, plus one more. You can't wash your underwear in a barbell. <laughs> to a Marine, the bayonet is part of the rifle. He learns to use it and use it aggressively. One of the tools you have to work with is a rifle-length bar padded at both ends. It's called a pugil stick. In the first sessions, you work against a dummy. 
but you keep in mind what you've been taught. That's what I like to see, a little man get out here and do something. That's all it takes. It's not how big you are, it's how good and aggressive you are. You lose control of that weapon, son, you're long gone. Next, you put on gloves and a football helmet and pair off. You drop down the pitchfork blow and then you'll have your head knocked off. Boy, all you're doing is you had your head down swing. Swing that guy blessed blade. You know like you want to cut somebody's head right off his shoulders. All right, come on. At this stage, you're working with the final and roughest section of the confidence course. And every time you successfully do something you never thought you could do, just that much more confidence and assurance is the result. Since this is something you've been learning in stages from the beginning, you don't usually have too much trouble, even with the tough one. The man who completes his training over the Paris Island Confidence Course may someday run into a physical obstacle for which he's not prepared, but it's not likely. If he's called on to climb, scale, swing, crawl, or slide, it won't be anything new. Of course, not everybody makes it the first time around. But they learn, and that's what it's for. In the final weeks, things seem to move faster and faster. You don't know what to expect and what's expected of you. And you're better able to meet those expectations. You begin to think that maybe you're gonna make it after all. The pace doesn't let up any, but that doesn't bother you like it did at first. The fact is, you're catching on. You're beginning to feel at home in the uniform of a United States Marine. Finally, the big day comes. Almost, but not quite, before you're prepared for it. The final review marks the end of recruit training, and the end of being a recruit for you. From this time on, you'll be a Marine. recruit platoons receive a personal letter from the general and will take their place in the reviewing area while the rest of the men pass in review. It's been a tough and demanding 12 weeks, but the feeling of achievement is worth it. And you know that whatever happens and wherever you go from here on in, you'll never forget your days as a recruit. For these men, this is the end of an important time in their lives as Marines. It's also only a beginning. Now they can begin to really master their profession. Advanced training is ahead in which each one of them will learn to use virtually every weapon of modern infantry combat. After that, assignment in the Fleet Marine Force. They've weathered a rugged 12-week transition from boy to man, and they'll never be the same again. They are, as they'll be glad to tell you, United States Marines.